Well, good evening to you all, my Victory Through Faith Church family and friends. Of course, it's me, Pastor Jay. I speak and I decree the blessing of the Lord over your lives. I pray that all is going well with you. And it's my prayer that all will go well for you. I'm excited to share the word with you today. I'm always excited to share the word. I believe that God's going to speak a word to your heart. It's going to make a difference in your life. That's going to empower you through faith and equip you for service. So before we go any further, let's make sure we go to God. Let's make sure we pray so that we can ensure the Holy Spirit is involved in what we're doing today. So, Father God, I thank you for another opportunity to teach your word with accuracy and with simplicity. I pray that as your word is taught Wisdom and revelation knowledge will flow freely. I bind up and I come against all distractions, all hindrances, anything that the enemy would try to use to separate us from exposure to and digestion of your word, Lord God. And I thank you right now that as I teach, your spirit speaks through me. I yield myself to you right now, Holy Spirit, and I give you the floor and I say, have your way through the teaching of your word today. It's in Jesus name we pray and we thank you in advance for it. Amen. And so be it. Well, let's dive into the word today. We're going to start a new lesson today. I'm not sure how long we'll be here. It's something the Spirit of God gave me to share with you, and so we're just going to dive into it, and we'll go as long as it takes. If we can wrap it up in a week, so be it. If it takes us three weeks, so be it. We're just going to roll with the Spirit of God on this. <clears throat> That's one of the reasons I enjoy midweek messages so much, because God can pull from a plethora of topics, subjects, and revelations to drop on us every week, and so I look forward to seeing what God gives us every single week. So today I'm going to teach from the subject, have faith in God, have faith in God. And you might be thinking, well, Pastor Jay, I, I know about faith and I, I got faith in God. So, you know, I already know where we're going. Well, we're going to go a slightly different route today. So I want you to rock with me and I don't want you to throw it away just because you think, well, I already know about faith. Faith doesn't come by having already heard. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. So today we're going to speak from the subject, teach from the subject, have faith in God. Now, Victory fam, I want to lead with this statement. <clears throat> this is the reason why the Spirit of God gave me this message to teach. I don't want us to just use faith as a tool to get things. Now, don't misunderstand me. Faith is a tool. Faith is a vehicle that we use to tap into the grace of God to receive everything that he's already provided for us before the foundation of the world. You got to understand that the Bible says for by grace are you saved through the avenue of faith. So it is by faith that we tap into the grace. God's favor, God's strength, God's power, God's ability, God's access to himself is by grace through faith that we receive everything that we need from God because he's already provided everything before the foundation of the world. It's our faith that taps into his grace that receives what we need here on earth. So I'm not against us using faith as a tool. The just shall live by faith. You have to use faith as a tool. I want us to go beyond that, though. I don't want us to just uh, relegate faith to using it when we want something. I want us to make sure that we have faith as well. And that's a key difference. I don't want us to just use faith. I want us to make sure we have faith. Did y'all catch that? I don't want us to just use faith. I want to make sure and ensure that we have faith. Mark eleven twenty two. 22, Jesus is teaching. He's explaining to the disciples how he was able to cause that fig tree to wither up from the root. And in Mark eleven twenty two, 22, Jesus tells them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith 
in God. Now, I want to ensure that we all have faith in God. In other words, I want to make sure that we have the right object of our faith. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to use faith to receive from God. That does not mean that we're going to use faith to call those things that be not as though they were. Everything that I've taught about faith still applies, still very much applies because the Bible is still true. What I'm talking about is another dimension or really not even another dimension. What I'm talking about is the base layer, the foundation for faith. You must have faith in God before you can even use faith. You got to have faith in God. And I want to make sure that we have our faith in God. Now, look, 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 look. Mark 11, 22, have faith in God. Y'all want to say that with me? Let's say it together. Have faith in in God. Now, I like to make scriptures a personal declaration. So anytime you read a scripture that blesses you, you can make it a personal declaration simply by adding that personal touch to it. I will have faith in God. Let's say that. I will have faith in God. That means I'm not going to have faith in anybody else. I'm not going to have faith in anything else. I will have faith in God. You can make it even deeper. I have faith in God, not just have faith in God. I 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 have faith in God. You got to personify it. You got to make the thing personal and real and relevant to your personal life and your situation. So listen to this. Because this is why we're talking about have faith in God. Having faith in God is not the same thing as using faith to receive things from God. What are you talking? Wait a minute, Pastor Jay. You, you throwing me off now. No, listen to me. Having faith in God is not the same thing as using faith to receive things from God. You can use something to get a desired end result without having possession of the thing you're using. Or you can use something without owning the thing that you're using or it being yours. I don't want us to just use faith to get stuff. I want us to have faith in the maker and creator and sustainer of all things. Having faith in God is not the same thing as using faith to receive things from God. Now, we got to use faith to receive things. Why? Because there are things that you need that can. Oh, yeah. There are things that you need that cannot be seen. There are things that you need that cannot be felt. There are things that you need right now that cannot be touched. There are things that you need right now that cannot be perceived with your physical senses. And so in order to receive those things that you cannot perceive with your senses, you have to use your faith. So I'm not telling you to stop using your faith. Hebrews 11 one says, now faith is the substance of what? Things. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And faith is also the evidence of what? Things not seen which implies that there are things that aren't seen that exist that you can't get unless you got faith. So we're going to always have to use our faith. The Bible tells us in Romans 1 17, the just shall live by faith. So you got to live by faith. You got to use faith to live the way God wants you to live. What I'm talking about today is not using faith to receive but having faith in the one who has created all things for us to receive. Having faith in God is not the same thing as using faith to receive things from God. And I think many believers use faith to get from God without really realizing that we need to have faith in God. Because if we get the thing from God, praise the Lord. But if we don't get the thing from God, then we're upset, we're angry, we're mad at God. We, we go on a temporary hiatus because how dare he not come through? 
He knew how much I needed this. He knows how much I prayed. He knows how much they meant to me. And so if he didn't answer my prayer, if he didn't give me what I believe I received, then he won't hear from me for a minute. Well, when you have faith, instead of using faith, you don't get to take a siesta. You don't get to take a vacation. You don't get to take a hiatus. When you have faith in God, you stay connected to him even when it doesn't work out the way you wanted it to, even when you don't get the results. We're talking about mature belief right now. Even when the thing that you wanted from God doesn't come through in the time frame that you wanted it, your faith in him does not wane nor waver because you have faith. You ain't just using faith to get something from God. You have faith because he is God. Having faith in God is not the same thing as using faith to receive from God. Now, what does have mean? Because I'd like to make sure that we're all on the same page when we're talking about subjects like this. So let's define have. Have faith in God. Have means to possess. It means to hold. So you could say possess faith in God or hold faith in God. The definition I really like is this to stand in a certain relationship with someone. Yeah, I have a relationship with Melody, Melody Wood, my wife. I have a relationship with Melody that no other person on this planet gets to have. She is my wife. I am her husband. Nobody else on this planet can claim to be my wife. Nobody else on this planet can claim to be Melody's husband, not truthfully. So I have faith in our love for each other because of who we are to each other and what we've declared for each other and the trust and the confidence that we've built up in each other. Well, in the same way, I have faith in my wife and even on a greater scale than that, I have faith in God because I'm in a relationship with God. I have a faith relationship with God. It's not based on what I feel. It's not based on what I see. It's not based on what I can put my hands to right now. My faith relationship with God is based on the evidence of things I cannot see. Glory to God. My faith relationship with God is based on what he has said. Even if I don't see the manifestation of what he said, in my personal life and situation, because it's a faith relationship, I don't have to see it to believe it. I know it to be so because of who he is and what he has said in his word. And I want us to get to that place where we have faith, even if we're struggling with using our faith. I want us to be in that position where we have faith regardless of if we get what we want from God in the time frame that we want it from him. To have means to possess, to hold, and to stand in a certain relationship with God. Are you in a faith relationship with God or y'all got an arrangement? All right, God, if you get me out of this, I'll, I, I'll follow you. All right, Lord, if you do this for me. I'll come to church. Okay, Father God, if you do this, then I'll start tithing. Well, Lord, if you do this, if you show me my wife, if you show me my husband, then I'll commit to you. I'll start living for you. All these conditions we put on belief when really, even if it doesn't benefit you right now, you still ought to have faith in God. Ooh, glory. Even if it doesn't benefit you right now, you still ought to have faith in God. And you know it's going to benefit you because... You've got salvation. What other benefit could you need or desire? You've been saved from death. You've been saved from the grave. You've been saved from hell. And you'll spend eternity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and our Father God. What other benefit could you possibly need? Well, we know to live on this planet, there are many things that you need. So I'm not saying, well, you get, you've been saved, so just scrap everything else. That's what I'm not saying. What I am saying is that in relation to who we are in Christ and what God has done for us through Christ, you should have everything you need to have a solid faith relationship with God. Now, let's define faith, because if I'm saying have faith, then we know have means to possess, to hold, to stand in a certain uh, relationship with someone referring to God. What is faith? 
for me to have faith, I need to know what faith is. So let's talk about faith. You might say, well, Pastor, I already know what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. No, that's not what faith is. That's, a, that's an aspect of faith. That's an attribute of faith. That's a characteristic of faith. But that is not a definition of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. But that's not a complete definition of what faith is. That is an aspect of faith. Those are characteristics of faith. It's substance and it's evidence of what's hoped for and what cannot be seen. When we're talking about faith, and I'm not going to nerd out on you too much, but when we're talking about have faith in God, this term faith is a Greek term called pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. And this Greek term pistis, which we typically see when we read the term faith in the New Testament, I want to share three definitions of what this word means. And each one of them are true. Each one of them are consistent with scripture. And I want us to be on the same page when it comes to what faith is and why we need to have faith in God. First, faith is conviction of the truth of anything. So if I have to have faith in God, I need to have or possess conviction of the truth of God and what he has said. If God said it, I believe it. That settles it. I've got faith in what he said. Even if I don't see anybody operating in the reality of what God said, just because he said it, I believe it. Even if I hadn't experienced it in my personal life, simply because he said it, I believe it because I have faith in God. And faith, first and foremost, is conviction of the truth of anything. It's conviction of the truth of God and conviction of the truth of what he has said. Let's look at our second definition for faith. What is faith? Faith is a conviction or belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things. I'll say that again. To have faith in God means I have conviction or belief respecting or in relation to my relationship to God and divine things. In other words, I believe God is able to do exceeding abundantly and above all that I ask or think because he said so. And because of what he said, that shapes my belief, that shapes my, my, my ability to expect God to move in my life. My conviction is shaped because of my relationship to God. He is my father. I am his child. I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. And because of what he has said in his word, that shapes my relationship with him. Not only does it shape my relationship with God, but it shapes how I view divine things. And that's how I typically like to refer to things that God is involved in. I know the world and even the church has a propensity to declare things supernatural. I prefer the term divine because the enemy operates supernaturally. So if you're just expecting supernatural manifestation, the enemy could manifest in your life and you'd be thinking it's God. Because y'all remember in, in Genesis, or not, not necessarily in Genesis, but do you remember in Exodus when God commanded Moses to bring the children out of Israel? And after speaking to Moses, he gave him a rod. And as one of the signs to show that God was with Moses, God commanded Moses to throw down his rod. And when Moses threw down that rod or threw down that staff, it became a snake. Well, most people would say that was a supernatural manifestation. And it was because uh, staffs and rods don't become snakes on their own. Well, if you know your Bible, you also know that Pharaoh's magicians and soothsayers and, 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 and demonically possessed people also threw down their rods. And their rods, guess what their rods did? Guess what their rods had the nerve to do? Their rods, their staffs also became snakes. But the Bible says how uh, Moses' rod ended up overpowering the other rods, which all became snakes. So that shows you that the enemy can emulate and copy divine moves of God and do it through supernatural means as the world and as even as church circles likes to refer to. So when I'm talking about God, 
I don't use Supernatural. Now, if you use Supernatural, hey, more power to you. It's not a heaven or hell issue. You ain't going to lose your salvation using the term Supernatural. But to protect my spirit and to make sure that the proper one gets the glory, whenever God is involved, I say divine manifestations or divine power. Because if it's supernatural, you don't know if it's God or if it's Satan involved. He has the ability to manipulate the natural. So you want to make sure that you're expecting for divine manifestations of God's power in your life and in your circumstances. So that's what faith is. It's a conviction or belief respecting your relationship to God and divine things. I believe in the gifts of the spirit. I believe in the prophetic gifts. I believe in the charismatic gifts. I believe in gifts of healing. Why? Because I understand and I have faith in God when it comes to divine things. Even if it doesn't make sense to me, I believe it because I respect and I have faith and I'm convinced that God is who he said he is in his word. And my third definition for faith, the first, first definition was conviction of the truth of anything. The second definition we used is a conviction or belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things. The third definition for faith that I want to share with you, and this is my last definition, is faith is belief. Oh, this is good. Faith is belief coupled with the predominant idea of trust. Oh, that's good. Because you can believe a thing but not trust it. So when we're talking about faith, faith is belief coupled with trust or you could say faith is belief coupled with confidence so faith ain't just i believe well yeah the bible says the demons believe and tremble belief is not enough faith is belief coupled with trust or faith is belief coupled with confidence that's when you know you're in faith that's why the bible says cast not away your confidence which has great recompense of reward you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you may obtain the promise. Don't let go of your confidence. I believe God and I have confidence in what he said. I have faith in who? God. Hallelujah. Now check this out. Now that we've defined our terms, let's dive a little deeper into what this means. So to have faith in God means to trust who he is, his nature, his character, his being uh, to have faith, not to have faith to get something. Just to believe that God is who he said he is. That means I trust who he is. I trust his nature. God is love. God is light. I trust his character. He is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He is Jehovah Rapha, my healer. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is who the Bible says that he is. So to have faith in God means that I trust who he is even when others don't. I trust who he is even when I can't see it. I trust who he is even if who he is isn't readily manifesting in the way that I need it to in my life right now. I still trust God because I have faith in him. And that faith won't wane. That faith won't diminish. Glory to God. That faith will remain strong. I got strong faith. I have a faith relationship with God. To have faith in God means to trust who he is, to trust his nature, to trust his character and his being. Well, how do I find out who he is? How do I discover his nature and how do I learn about his character and his being? How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? The word. So I have to hear the word of God continually and consistently so that I can have faith in who God is, his nature, his character, and his being. If I don't hear the word consistently, I will struggle to know who God is. And if I struggle to know who God is, I'll struggle to know his nature. And if I struggle to know his nature, I'm going to struggle to understand his character. And if I struggle to understand his character, I will have an issue believing who, who he is and his being. In him we live and move and have our being. I can't have my being if I don't understand his being. Because as he is, so are we. So if I can't understand God, if I can't understand Jesus, if I can't understand Holy Spirit, I can't understand me. Ah, because we're made in his image. 
and we're made in his likeness. So if I struggle to understand God, I will never understand me. Oof. Hallelujah. Selah. If we struggle to understand God, we will struggle to understand ourselves because we come from him. We are as he is. Hallelujah. Okay, let's move forward. That blessed me right there, y'all. Your identity is in Christ. If you don't know Jesus, you can't know you. Well, you might say, I do know me. I know how I went all. No, no. You know how you've been trained to function. You know how this world has shaped you to behave and react and respond. You have not discovered the fool you yet because the fool you is hidden in Christ. Hallelujah. The real you is hidden in Christ. And you have to, that has to be revealed to you. You can't learn that in college. You can't, you can't learn that in seminary. You really can't learn that going to church every Sunday. The real you has to be revealed by spending time with God personally in his word and prayer. Time in the spirit, getting to know him. And as you get to know him, he reveals yourself to you. That's so good. As you get to know him, he reveals yourself to you. All right, what else does it mean to have faith? To have faith in God, listen, okay. I, I got to say this, and I pray y'all get this. Because I understand we need things from God. I'm not telling you to stop using your faith to get things. I, there's some things I need from God. There's some things I desire from God. There's some things that I've got my faith on, and I'm not going to lay that down because of this message. I just want you to have a more comprehensive understanding of what faith is when it comes to God, that we can't just use faith to get... <laughs> Okay, we can't just use faith to use God. Yeah, it sounds kind of harsh, but that's how it came. We can't just use faith to use God. We need to use faith to live the way God wants us to live. And we need to have faith in God. So to have faith in God is not primarily about getting anything from God. I want to make that clear. Have faith in God. It's not primarily, but now we will receive by faith from God those things that we need. Anything pertaining to life and godliness, you can use your faith to get it. That's not what I'm talking about right now, though. To have faith in God isn't primarily about getting anything from God. It's deeper than getting God to do something. To have faith in God is about choosing to believe and obey him. Oh, listen to this, y'all. Having faith in God is about choosing to believe and obey him, even when it makes no sense, when it isn't popular, or it doesn't seem to benefit you personally. Ooh, yo, now that's big boy stuff. That's big girl stuff right there. I'll say that again. Having faith in God is about choosing. Because he won't force you to have faith in him. you got to choose to have faith in God. He won't violate your free will. Having faith in God is about choosing to believe and obey him. Even when it makes no sense, when it isn't popular, when it doesn't align with culture, or it doesn't seem to benefit you personally. Yeah, having faith in God means you're going to have to make some decisions sometimes that cost you up front. That make... Like God told Abraham, get thee from your kindred and from your family to a land that I will show you. What do you mean? Leave everything I know to go somewhere I don't have a clue about? That doesn't seem like it's going to benefit me personally. But Abram had faith in God. Yeah, there are times when having faith in God means what you're doing makes no sense. What you're doing is not the popular move to make. And what you're doing doesn't even seem to be benefiting you right now. Giving away 10% of your money doesn't seem like it's going to benefit you personally, does it? But when I have faith in God, returning the tithe to him opens up the windows of heaven and allows him to pour out a blessing on my life that I don't have room enough to receive. And he has the gall and the nerve to rebuke the devourer for my sake. How can I not? Now, it don't make sense. And it don't seem like it's going to benefit me to give away 10% of my money every week or every two weeks or every month. But I have faith in what he said. And since I have faith in what he said, I choose to believe 
and obey him. In a nutshell, having faith in God is more about him than it is about you. <laughs> having faith in God is more about him than it is about you. I trust you, God. I believe you are who the word says you are. I believe you've done what the word says you've done. And I believe you will continue to be who the word says you will be in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. So now is the time to build, to increase, to enhance, to strengthen your faith in God. So when the time does come when you need to use your faith, because you got to just shall live by faith. You're going to have to use your faith. But you can't wait till you need it to start using it and building it. You got you to gotta have faith in him now. Increase and enhance and strengthen your trust and your confidence in him now. So when the time comes for you to use your faith, you won't struggle with having confidence in God's ability and willingness to perform what you've seen him declare in the word. Uh, yeah, thank you, Lord. I sure will love going to Romans. Romans chapter 4. Verses 20 and 21, it says, he, referring to Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what God had promised, God was able also to perform. The reason Abraham was able to be fully persuaded that God was able to perform what he promised is because his faith was not in what God promised. His faith was in who promised it to him. Ooh, hallelujah. Abraham's faith was in God. And because his faith was in God, he was fully persuaded that God was going to come through because he knew if God don't come through, he's a liar. Because he initiated the contact with me. He said I would be the father of many nations. He said Sarah would have a child a year from now. He said this and he said that. So I have faith in him and I'm fully persuaded that even though it makes no sense, even if it's not a popular thing for people to be doing right now, and even if it seems like it ain't benefiting me to leave everybody I know and love to go to a place I'm unfamiliar with to have some children with a woman who's never been able to have children, it don't make sense. It don't even benefit me personally to leave what I know and I love. But I have faith in the one who initiated the contact with me. Hallelujah. And when the time comes, you won't struggle with confidence in God's ability and his willingness to perform what he said because you have faith in him. Not just in what he said. Not just in what you heard. You have faith in him. And the more you hear about God, the more faith you can have in God. How does faith come? By what? Hearing the word. So to walk with God, we must have faith. Why? Because you can't see him. The Bible says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Well, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you're going to walk with God, you got to walk by faith, and you got to have faith in who he is. You got to have faith in his nature, faith in his character, faith in his being, faith in what he has said. So I implore you, I encourage you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, build yourself up on your most holy faith. Now is the time to increase. Now is the time to strengthen. Now is the time to develop your faith in God. Before you use it to get anything, just develop your faith in him. I have faith in God. And when you do that, when the time comes for you to have to place your confidence, your trust in his ability and his not just look at look at this, look at this. And we get ready to shut this down, not just in his ability. Abraham knew that God was able to perform what he promised, but in his willingness to do it. God, I know that God can do. I want you to be strengthened in the truth that he wants to. Ah. Lord, I know you can do it. Help me be strengthened in the truth that you want to do it, that you have done it. And I believe and receive it because I have faith in you. Glory to God. Amen. Well, that's it, Victory Fam. That's all I got for you today. I done stirred myself up behind that. I pray that you were blessed by what you heard. Remember this. You are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service and your success is in God's word. I love you. I love you. I love you. Be blessed and have faith 
and God.